you'll now need to fine tune all the pivots to stop this jerking animation. You can click and drag the pivots into the correct place for all the frames. Or there are some shortcuts. If you know ahead of time where the pivots are for every sprite, back in Photoshop, paint a single pixel representing where the pivot is located. Note that in cases where the pivot pixel is not connected to the sprite, when the auto setter runs it will treat them as separate sprites. So you have to paint in some pixels to connect them. I have a layer called stalks that achieves this. Make sure the pivot pixels and the stalks are on the image alpha channel and resave the file. Back in the editor, the sprites will now show these pivot pixels. Under the auto set menu, choose the right colour and click get piv for pivots. The pivots will now move automatically onto the respective pivot pixels. The animation should now be free of jerks and you can see that the pivot pixel is in the same place for every frame. Regardless of the size and shape of the sprite. After using getPiv, check the console. If any sprites couldn't find their pivot, it will say so here. For these frames, the pivot pixel is outside of the rect boundary. To remedy this, click Shrink Wrap to expand the rects along those stalks. Now you can click getPiv to move these pivots. The console should say all pivots found. Go back to Photoshop, turn off the pivot pixels and stalks, and reset the alpha channel back to it as it should be. Now when you shrink wrap again, the rect should return to their correct size. If the sprite bitmap already had the pivot pixels and stalks when you ran the auto set originally, these steps will have already been handled automatically. One further tool for the pivots, if you had chosen to set the pivots manually like this, under Auto Set, if you pick a colour and click Draw Piv, this will create a bitmap in your project. Open it in Photoshop, and you'll find that it has drawn the manually placed pivots. You can then drag this over the sprite sheet position it correctly and save it for future reference. The editor can also pack the sprite sheet, so you'll need to create a new sprite to hold the packed information. So create a new directory, a new 3D text, a new prefab, drop the 3D text onto the prefab and delete it from the scene. Add the animated sprite script as a component. Create a new material with the textured text shader. And nine new custom fonts. For this set of fonts, I'm going to call them Anim, Idle, and so on, so as to not confuse them with the setup animations. They need to be assigned to the new sprite in the same order as they were in the initial sprite. Now drop the initial sprite into the top editor slot and the new sprite into the second. Click pack and voila. You can now close the editor window. The packed map will be in the same directory as the sprite prefab. Drop this into the blank material. Delete the preview scene object and create an instance of the sprite in the scene. Here the image is blurry because the import settings for the packed bitmap have filtering set to bilinear. And the colours are bad because of compression format. I have a small scene set up here with some basic cubes. 
Now click play. The animated sprite script has a few GUI buttons, so you can check out the animations. Now let's have a look at how the script works. Here are the two external variables, one for the sprite material and one for the array of fonts which it treats as animations. TM and TMR are the text mesh and renderer components respectively. This function is all it takes to animate it. Every 0.1 seconds, frame is incremented. If frame exceeds the length of the animation, the function switches based on the loop behaviour. If it's of type loop, it sets frame to the given value. If it's type ping pong, frame step is made negative so that it goes backwards. If it's a hold, then frame is just set back one to always display the last frame. If it's once and change, then it calls the changeAnim function, which I'll explain in a moment. Then the character drawn by the text mesh is updated. When the animation is playing, you can see here in the inspector that the script is constantly cycling the text. This is what creates the illusion of animation. The changeAnim function simply reassigns the font used by the text mesh. And that's as simple as it needs to be. But with a bit more script, you can do a bit more stuff. If this is a player character sprite, for example, you probably want to have some user control. So, start by adding a character controller component to the sprite. You'll probably want to adjust the size and position of this controller capsule. This is the size of capsule that I want, but the sprite is clearly too big. By some coincidence, the text mesh has a property called character size. Make this smaller. The sprite now matches the size of the controller. You'll now have to create a more in-depth script. I have animated sprite test. So remove the original animated sprite component and add this one. Reassign the material and fonts into the variables of the component. This script is more or less exactly the same. It still has the animate sprite and change anim functions. Everything else here is just for handling input and translating that into calls to change anim. The actual animation part is the same. I also have a camera follow script on my camera. Now when you click play you should have a fully controllable sprite. This script also has a few properties for movement speed and jump power. as well as frame rate to play the animations faster. And slower. This concludes the demonstration of using 3D text to animate sprites.